Let's go back to, I don't know, 2009. I had bought a camera. I did not know anything about taking pictures. I figured, you know, this would be a nice lifetime skill to learn photography. So I'm taking pictures of flowers and plants and trees. And my goal every day was to take one great photo. And then my buddy Brandon calls me up. He's a bartender at this nightclub. He's like, would you like to come by and take some photos? I'm like, look, number one, I've never taken photos of people. Number two, what do I know about the club? Okay. But I figured, look, this could be a little bit of variety. It might be fun to learn. Long story short, out of that, my hobbies typically turn into businesses. It you know, went from me taking pictures of flowers and plants to creating a photography company in the hospitality industry that would work with nightclubs, bars, restaurants, concert venues, like Live Nation and, you know, and so on, that we would be out there all over Atlanta taking photos. And I remember we, we would take pictures in nightclubs. I'd be out there you know, taking pictures in the club. And I couldn't even afford to get in the club. That was a failure while my friends were uh, growing in their careers, buying new homes and cars and just you know, being promoted. And here I am taking pictures in nightclubs. I was supposed to go to medical school. But out of that came a, uh, another business that we later would call Crisp that was first was in the corporate brand and, and video space, working like Coca-Cola, Verizon, Red Bull, et cetera. But before we worked Coca-Cola, Verizon, and Red Bull, we worked in the agricultural business taking uh, videos on farms. And someone could say, hey man, compared to these agencies, here you are filming peanuts and watermelon in the middle of nowhere where you don't even have cell service. Like, what kind of agency are you building here, man? But out of that evolution came focus on various niches, which eventually led to us working within the legal industry. And even then, we were not the first or the second or the third in this space. There was a lot of companies that have been around for 10, 20, 30 years. We were a very small player. Nobody knew us. We knew who the hell we were. But you could say, okay, well, you know, maybe that was a failure. Then we expanded from video, legal video, to marketing. We had to place the content too, because our clients were like, look, I got these great videos, but I don't want to just put them up and you know, play them at cocktail parties. I want to get the phone ringing. So we said, all right, we're going to post this stuff online. We're going to put it up on social media, Facebook, YouTube, LinkedIn, Instagram, et cetera. But social media was still, you know, one of these taboo things from law firms because they only had three letters in their brains, which was S, E, and O. And there's a lot of lobbying by the SEO industry that convinced law firms that SEO was the only form of marketing. And we decided to say, well, there's other ways. There's this platform that's kind of evolving. It's called like Facebook. And then there's another one called Instagram. There's another one called YouTube, which is like the second largest search engine. They're like, wait, search. Okay, cool. YouTube's fine by me. And still, we were still a relatively small company. Nobody knew about us. And then we evolved and started the coaching side of the business. And many people came out and said, this is a terrible idea. What are you guys doing? Stick to the videos. What are you guys doing coaching? Man, there's so many companies already doing coaching. Everybody's a coach. Well, we saw that for our firms that were over a million in revenue, there really wasn't a home for them. Because a lot of these organizations focusing on small firms, kind of like the zero to 250 mark, zero to 500,000. And we said, look, we're not going to be the zero to one, but we are going to be the organization that helps firms scale and grow and optimize, especially once they get past that million dollar mark in revenue. Now the business exploded and people are like, oh, this is amazing. But you see all these evolutions and in each one, one could get imposter syndrome and say, okay, maybe we're a failure. We're a very small player. But then as that starts to build, each one becomes a learning experience, which becomes the next evolution. And that's how you go from taking pictures of flowers and plants to ultimately coaching lawyers all around the world.